Welcome. In the late 1800s, the industrial boom caused America's cities to grow at unprecedented speed. We've discussed New York as the golden door for immigrants. But other cities, such as Philadelphia, Chicago, St. Louis, New Orleans, and others were bursting at the seams with newcomers. Many of these newcomers were immigrants, but growing numbers of native-born Americans were moving to the cities as well. Between 1880 and 1920, 11 million of these Americans left behind the econo economic hardship of their farms and headed for the opportunities of the cities. So this migration within the country, combined with new immigration of people moving into the U.S. from other countries, combined with industrialization of the United States, meant explosive growth to the nation's cities, and we will discuss the challenges of these growing cities. Now, many African Americans took part in this internal migration, and they did so for several reasons. First, in 1870, fewer than a half million of the nation's five million African Americans lived outside the South, so most of them were concentrated in the South. But after Reconstruction ended in 1877, segregation and acts of racial violence against African Americans increased. During this period, many southern states instituted a system of legal segregation or the segregation of people by race. In the South, Jim Crow laws sought to deny African Americans of the same rights as white people. The name came from a minstrel show routine called Jump Jim Crow in which a white entertainer in black face makeup performed unflattering caricatures of African American song and dance. So by 1890, partly as a result of these pressures and violence, another 150,000 black Southerners had left the South and many rural African Americans had moved to nearby cities. Then in 1910, the boll weevil destroyed the cotton crops and floods ruined, ruined Alabama and Mississippi farmlands. These disasters drove several hundred thousand more African Americans out of the South, mostly to northern cities. There was promise in the North, but most African American migrants had a difficult time finding skilled labor jobs in the North. Now, before the Civil War, cities were small in area, rarely extending more than three or four miles across. Most people lived near their workplace and walked wherever they had to go. But during the Industrial Age, cities began to expand in area. The introduction of new types of public transportation allowed people to get from place to place more easily. Now people began to move outside the cities. Suburbs or residential communities surrounding cities began to appear. When motorized vehicles were invented, suburban life grew even more. Elevated trains allowed commuters to bypass the congested streets in New York. During this time, subways were also constructed underground in cities such as Boston. Cities grew upward as well as outward. Before the Civil War, buildings stood no more than five stories high. Yet as urban space became scarce, buildings were made taller and taller. Thus, the skyscraper was born. To build these mammoth structures, engineers needed the strength of new Bessemer steel girders. To reach the upper floors of these skyscrapers, people relied on the speed and efficiency of new elevators invented by Alicia Graves Otis. As they expanded, a pattern seemed to appear in many U.S. cities. Specialized areas emerged within them. Banks, financial offices, law firms, and government offices were located in one central area, while retail shops and department stores were located in another central neighborhood. Industrial, wholesale, and warehouse districts formed a ring around the center of the city.